Oh, it was terrific growing up in Blessington. As you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. There was plenty of things to keep us occupied. I'm technically from Ballymore Eustace because of my address, but I did attend the national school here at St. Mary's and uh, it holds a special place in my heart. I was drawing from an early age and I, I was really encouraged by my parents. I used to get art supplies uh, for my birthday and Christmas. And, but I do remember actually my teacher, Mrs. Nash, in first class, because we, we had a lot of trees around our house and I was drawing trees. But I do remember she especially got charcoal in for me to, to draw these trees. And I remember being sent around the other classrooms to show off my picture. So it was that kind of encouragement that got me to go on into our college. Well, secondary school, I wasn't very academic. I did a terrible leaving cert, but was, I loved drawing and was interested in animation. So I put together a bit of an animation portfolio and applied to some of the various colleges, but without a decent leaving, it didn't, I, I, I couldn't get into the courses. So I went and did a portfolio course with FeeTac. Uh, and there I began to paint with oil bars. And it was off the back of my portfolio that I got in FeeTac the FETAC course that I applied to NCAD and got in kind of almost, um, I wouldn't say by accident, but it, it, it was a, a divergence that I didn't really, hadn't really planned on. I've got two practices at the moment. Uh, I do uh, illustration, digital illustration through MS Paint, uh, for which I, I do a lot of sunsets and various things, various requests. I do commissions, people ask me for very specific things, uh, but mostly my, my sunsets uh, support me and they support another practice that I have. I, I, I'm a performer. I make uh, online kind of viral videos, comedy mostly. Uh, and from, the, from that, I have started to perform live, uh, do a lot of storytelling. And I've got a show coming up in the Sugar Club in Dublin uh, on the 28th of December, which is sold out. Uh, but I've got another date on, on the 29th. Hi, love. How are you? <sighs> well, I haven't heard from you in ages. We worry about you. Look, Mum, you know I'm in London doing cool London stuff. Have you ever contacted your brother? Or your sister? Or, or... Oh, did I just do that? <laughs> oh my God, I'm such a bad arse. When I move through the streets, there's love. When that sun shines down from above. I suppose making the YouTube videos in the first place was quite an immediate process, and it just required me and a camera, and it was very simple. And translating that into a live show was a more laborious process than I gave it credit for. And I suppose when I went into that and I was trying to figure it out, I realized that there was lots of moving parts to it. You had to meet the right people and you just can't do everything yourself. So yeah, it's, you, you, you kind of think it's going to be easy and then it, it, you're almost, you, you open up a can of worms. But then it's, it's, really, it, it's really exciting kind of following all of those avenues and figuring out all these different things. And, experimenting with them and doing kind of smaller scale shows and seeing how they work and I suppose reusing ideas as well then on a bigger scale but um, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to see it all come together uh, and it's quite exciting when you do a show you got a crowd there. Emigrating wasn't as tough for me as it would have been for people who are making their way to the ends of the earth because I, I'm literally only kind of 
emigrating to London. And it's not so far, but I think we take for granted the kind of cultural differences, I suppose, because we're speaking the same language. People think it's going to be quite handy to adjust. But I found a certain, I suppose it's a bit the same with probably with most big cities, but there's a certain coldness and it's an unfamiliar place that makes it quite tough. Um, and I think that coming from Ireland, people are very uh, hospitable and uh, very open for chat, you know. You, you, you will, you take it for granted how often you kind of talk to a stranger in Ireland. But in, in London, oh God, people look, look at you like you got two heads. Uh, even if it's a throwaway comment at the bus stop, um, people look at you like you're mad. <laughs> I'd say it's, it's, it's might be harder for us than for other people considering our hospitality. Well, I suppose uh, coming back here after living in London for three years, even just coming down to the lake now to, to film this is a good example. I suppose last time I was here would have been just kind of in pursuit of girls, etc. And I wasn't really taking in the surroundings. Let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of Blessington. My first stop on our whirlwind tour of Blessington Village is of course Dempsey's Chip Shop. Now, any Blessington person worth their salt and vinegar, pardon the pun, will have had chips from here and will, dare I say it, they are the best chips in the whole of Ireland. And this man is said to have psychic powers, and I guarantee if you go in for your chips in here, he's gonna know something about you. What are you doing? Uh, we're doing a little tour of Blessington. Some of the hot spots. Hey. Huh? This place. <laughs> <laughs> This monument in Blessington was provided by the Marquis of Downshire to his loyal uh, tenants. Now, the, his tenants in 1978 actually burned his mansion to the ground, so I don't think they were very fond of him. This water here, it's actually fine to drink. It's just very good. You'll only get that in Blessington. The 65, the gateway to Dublin city. The yellow brick road, if you will. Now, the 65 bus route is arguably, probably the best bus route in the whole of Ireland. Many experts will agree on this. It's a rite of passage as a person from Blessington to actually fall asleep on the 65, go all the way out to Ballymore, back into Dublin, and wake up in, say, Ringsend bus station. It was here at the age of 16 that I worked out the back in the baler room, baling cardboard boxes. It was there where I got my muscles, in case you were ever you were wondering. Um, it was also there where I developed a terrible phobia of cardboard boxes. But Dan used to say to me, do you know what Hugh, you're probably the best cardboard box baler I've ever come across in my life. Thank you for joining me on this whistle stop tour of Blessington Main Street. And I'd like to invite you to come to this busy thoroughfare and perhaps take in some of these sites and enjoy a bag of chips down at Tea Dances. Thank you very much.